is Talk TV. It is the place to be. It's a beautiful sunny day out there, actually. Blue sky, no clouds. Very nice indeed. Quite a good day to be off on strike uh, if you can afford it. And, of course, if you are a teacher, you can afford it because you get paid pretty well uh, and it doesn't really count. In fact, you might even be still getting paid today because the fact that the schools have shut down voluntarily mean that you can still put in for a day's work because you were prevented from going to the school to actually work. William Clouston is here. William, very good morning to you. Great to be back. Nice to see you. Um, so, today's the day that we've got mm. the biggest number of people striking since about the 1970s, is it? Probably, yeah. Something probably like the 70s, that. Yeah. Something like that. Um, to what purpose would be my first question? Well, they, uh, I can understand uh, workers in any industry uh, wanting their costs looked after. That what, what you really have here is a clash between two sets of costs and mathematics, really. You've got mm. domestic costs, which are, you know, food, fuel, uh, housing costs, um, and the Bank of England is going to probably put up interest rates this, this week by another half percent, so it'll tighten the screw. So they're facing that, and it's not unreasonable that facing that they try and get a pay rise. The problem is that that set of economics, the domestic set of economics, is clashing with a national set of economics because the government can't balance its books. Mm. And you've got Sharon Graham, the uh, General Secretary of Unite, saying... Uh, we want inflation plus, it's, it can't be done. I mean, the money isn't there to have uh, a pay uh, rise of that kind. Um, so, but in know, the she, case of teachers, right, they got a 9% pay rise back yeah, in October of last yeah. year. Now, that was only in October. Mm. Now, at that time, uh, inflation wasn't running at 9%, was it? No, it isn't. It wasn't. And uh, the present claim is inflation plus. And I think anyone asking for in inflation plus is not really living in the real no, world. but I, I already had, my point is, I already had inflation plus. Yeah, 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 and no, I get that. They don't say yeah. that. They don't say, well, no, at the time not. when we got 9%, inflation was only at 2%. Of course not. So actually, no. we've already got a 7% rise. Yeah, yeah, and their, their argument on the other side is that they're trying to make up for, for a decline in real wages. That's probably happened, but um, uh, as I say ad nauseum on this uh, show and others, the reason that we've got declining uh, wages and declining productivity is we don't make anything in this country and we have a balance of payments deficit, and we, we're not as productive as we need, need to be. Everything, all of these, you know, teachers, ambulance drivers, firefighters, nurses, civil servants, train drivers, ultimately, most of this, certainly in the public sector, is paid for by profits mm. and surpluses made in the private sector. Yeah. And if you're not trading well enough, you can only pay yourself what you're, what you're earning. And right. that's the basic problem. That's why I characterise it as sort of domestic economics, your household fighting what is a national picture where the money isn't there. Mm. Sharon Graham can say the money is there, but, it, Mike, it really isn't there. But also what we see is that in all of these disputes, mm. very little more than about 50% of the people who are working actually want to go on strike. Yes. You know, in fact, in the teaching unions, two out of the three teaching unions didn't get big enough numbers to actually mm. go out on strike, mm. which tells you that not everybody wants to go out on strike. It tells you that basically the people who are milking this to a yeah. large extent are those who have a political leaning, mm. those who are socialists, those who mm. believe, like the leader of the NEU, yeah. uh, who used to be uh, the head of socialist teachers or whatever mm. it's called, right? I'm sure. These are people that want to bring down the government. They're all making the same argument. Mm. You know, it can't be true, mm. for example, that teachers, nurses... Um, firefighters, um, paramedics, every single member of every single job in every public sector has the mm. same reason for striking, unless they're collaborating with it. I don't know. Uh, you, uh, unions, union activism uh, has tended to be... Um, it's, it's, a, it's of a similar type, isn't it, across the decades? Who, which which stop, shop steward gets involved? Who gets to the top? It tends to be the activists. Look at the RMT. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they are very political. But that aside, I mean, the point I'd make about it is that the, you've got to ask for something that's reasonable. And, and, and to take the, the nurses, for instance, it's very unusual, Mike, for uh, the Royal College of Nursing to go on strike. It's almost unprecedented. But they have. They've been, mm. you know, they've been on strike. And to ask for 20% plus, I mean, you look at it realistically, Mike, if they got 20% plus, it would break, financially break the very mm. trusts they work for. Yeah, but also, they can't get just whatever they want to ask for. I no. mean, there are plenty of people that I speak to who have regular jobs and mm. who are relatively happy with what their lot is, but mm. they say, well, it'd be great if I could get a 20% pay rise, mm. but I can't go on strike in order to try and get it mm. because I know I won't get it. So what's the point? Everybody wants more money. They do, but the but the point, the, the wider point I'd make on this is that, and this is why the government does have a role, I mean, I think the, you can you can say, you can praise the government saying we're not giving in, but on the other hand, on, on the railways, 
I've criticised them because they're not. There's no one at the other side of the table. Hmm. So the RMT and the and Aslev and the others are saying we want this, hmm. and then you have a chaotic side of the other side, side of the table. You've got several different companies and the, the networks, and there's no one to, to negotiate with. Meanwhile, Mike, you know, in this city above all cities, the collateral costs to the wider economy of these these things ramp up. Hmm. And so. Even in a, in a single sector like the hospitality sector, the rail strikes in December were estimated to cost it, you know, one and a half billion yeah. quid. Now, when you have a situation where the collateral damage to the economy and wider society, which is far bigger than the the the, the claim they're putting in, uh, it, it's 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 not a rational situation. You've got to come to the table and meet in the middle. I I think the only solution to this is to meet in the middle. I don't think you can. They they. I think it's reasonable for people to ask for pay rises when you've got ramp, rampant inflation, but to ask for more than inflation is... is I don't is think un... it's reasonable for teachers who've just got a 9% pay rise less than three months ago, mm. four months ago, to say they now need another 20. That's not reasonable. No, that's ridiculous. That's and it's ridiculous. ludicrous. Yeah, yeah. No, and I don't I... think it's even reasonable to ask for another pay rise. By all means, say, we'd like to have this looked at once again they... in the coming 12 months, because yeah. why not? But not everybody gets a pay rise every single year unless their actual uh, productivity improves or yeah, unless their job somehow becomes a more important job. You know, I don't know anyone in the private mm. sector who just willy-nilly gets a pay rise every single year just it, because they're there. It is. It is. It, private sector and public sector are quite different, aren't they? I mean, the, the civil servants are asking for uh, uh, an increase, which is uh, actually their claim is a little bit more reasonable, around 9 or 10 percent. Uh, but I think they'd have a better chance of getting if they all actually got back to work. I mean, well, another, I another I issue. Another issue here is you're st the economy is still reeling from people not turning up mm. and staying at home and working uh, in the pajamas, and they should be back at work. I mean, know? I think the other problem that we've got here is that people don't work very hard in this country, mm. and the public sector people in particular do mm. not provide very good services for an awful lot of people, so therefore, why should they get any kind of pay rise would be my uh, question. I mean, the NHS um, is absolutely uh, falling down around itself, right? Mm. They claim it's because it's underfunded. Mm. Funnily enough, the teachers are claiming they're underfunded. Funnily mm. enough, the paramedics are claiming they're underfunded. Everybody's underfunded. But you, uh, right? get, well, do your job, and then I'll maybe get, you'll get more money. I'll go back to it. The, the, the economy, you can only spend the money you earn. You know, and that's that's a reality which the union ha unions have to accept on their side. It's right saying, well, we want this and that, but uh, unless the money—I mean, the, the, the government is in deficit this year, as it was last year, mm. substantially. The money isn't there. You can say that's why I'd argue that you've got to, for the sake of the economy, the wider, for the country's sake, you've got to try and uh, get a deal that's not uh, unreasonable. Not and also, asking all for... of these people in the public sector are asking for me and yeah, you yeah. and everybody else who pays tax to pay more tax so they can have more money. I don't think so. That's not happening. How about this from Sarah Vine? She says, does anyone give a fig about all of us hard-working taxpayers whose lives are being wrecked by strikes? And I think she speaks for the vast majority of people in this country who are not on strike, who would just like to go about their daily business, who would like to be able to send their children to school, yeah. who would like to be able to get the operation that they were saying they were told they were going to get on the day they were going to get it, uh, who would like to be able to uh, get an ambulance to hospital when they need one. That's the point about collateral damage. And when the, when the cost of the damage to the wider economy and people can't get to work, uh, you know, companies going business, the high street's failing, uh, you can't really afford this. You've got the, People have to try and settle. But, no, uh, we can't afford it. It's we can't. Fair. It's not yeah. that the government can't. We can't afford it. Well, so it amounts We've to the same no thing. We've got no more money to give. It amounts to the same thing, Mike. You, you're, you're, the, all, all that this will do is that you borrow more down the line. Mm. So the mathematics of the, the household is set against the country. Uh, it was very interesting, actually. Someone made a comment on the, on the riots in France and mm. the claims, you know, because Macron wants to put the retirement age up, so, they retire, you know, so the, there are riots. But frankly, if, you're, if you care about France if you care about the economy and the government and the ability of that society to pay for itself, you can't uh, resist what he's doing. No, you, you can't. You can't. People are living longer. You know, yeah. you can't... I mean, I make this point all the time about pensions. You mm. can't expect people to be paid more yeah. and longer for being on a pension than they were actually working. Reality. Which is sometimes what's going on. Yeah. Uh, but stay where you are. William Clouston is here, leader of the Social Democratic Party. We're going to be talking about a great many things coming up later on. We'll be talking about why they're coming for your wood-burning stove. I'm not having it. Uh, you can take it from my cold, dead hands, as Charlton Heston would say. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. Uh, this from Mike. He says, my friend is a teacher. She told me she won't be going on strike and that she is happy with her pay. Her big beef is there isn't any equipment. Uh, she is buying pencils for her own children. Um, well, that does seem ridiculous. But like many things in this country, 
um, no doubt the teaching business isn't very well run. Uh, here's one from Lee in Rugby. The teachers bleat on about their workload, the class size and the school day length is the same now as it was 40 years ago. It's not about workload, it's greed. £40,000 salaries and 13 weeks off. Uh, nice work if you can get it. Uh, my brother was a teacher, very frustrated at other teachers' attitude, uh, says this texter. He used to say most days in the classroom at five years old and left with a good pension 50 years later. Well, that's true. Um, I should tell you that, uh, that my son's uh, school is on uh, closed today because they couldn't find out how many teachers were actually going on strike. But they just sent me an email about uh, the year 11 prom, um, which in these difficult times, of course, uh, they understand is hard to pay for. It's going to be 44 quid. 44 quid. Are you having a laugh? I mean, you know, honestly, shouldn't they be teaching people online or something? Today? It used to be free. Uh, well, I don't even know why they have a prom. What's the prom for? I yeah. never had a prom when I left school. It's the American thing. I know it is. Yeah. I mean, I ask that rhetorically. I mean, I know what a prom <laughs> yeah, is. I mean, just, yes, but, yeah. you know, why are we doing it? Yeah. And why does it cost nearly £50? Pounds? Because what the Americans do, we have to do. Why? Yeah. Well, it's just what they've decided. But, you know, you won't hear that inside the classroom because they hate America because it's yeah. capitalist country. Well, they've taken, socialist of, they've, teachers. they've taken a lot of its progressive workery, haven't they? That's oh, all we have. Unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of uh, wokery, uh, how about this government mm. uh, and the accusations that were made at the weekend from Big Brother Watch um, that many people, including myself mm. and Julie Hartley Brewer, to name mm. but two, mm. uh, were on a sort of watch list, effectively, mm. uh, because we didn't agree with what they were doing. Well, you and, and uh, Peter Hitchens and yeah. Toby Young and a lot of other people, yeah, this is actually quite shocking. Uh, here we are thinking we live in a free society where yeah. we can... Uh, it's our job. I mean, it's my job as a politician to criticise the government if I think it should be criticised. Yeah. And that's what they I was don't doing. They get a free pass. That's what I was doing. Yeah. Actually, that's what I was doing. And I never, ever, throughout the whole period... I mean, the SDP was the only par party that really consistently objected to lockdowns, mm. successive lockdowns throughout. Yeah. Separate question from vaccination. But, you know, we, we objected to them. We, we, we were taking an entirely rational view. Government goes around boasting about evidence-based policy... Mm. Uh, we were applying logic to the lockdowns. We, well, we were asking out, questions. Well, so-called evidence-based policy didn't apparently have any evidence behind it. No. Well, I mean, they didn't. Let me just think of a think of a policy. Uh, tell people you've got scientific backing, and yeah. then make them do it. And forget about the costs of the suppression measures themselves. All we ever really asked was, "Are you sure that you're not going to kill more people by the, the effect of the lockdowns?" Mm. And, and, and actually, as the excess death rates are coming through, which could you know you'll have you could have a tale that's five years, ten years from this yeah. chaos. All we were doing was pointing that out. Meanwhile, it turns out the government use a, a part of the army, this uh, MOD 77th mm. Brigade, which is meant to be there to uh, look at foreign enemies. Yes. Uh, and not, not uh, supervise and snoop on people doing their job. So it is actually quite appalling. Um, you know, Peter Hitchens said that quite a few of his uh, his output over this period just didn't get the cut through mm. that it might have yeah. done. And people who are on the side of the government on this, of course, mm. say things, really stupid things like... Oh, well, you're still writing for the Mail on Sunday. What do you mean you were shut down? Well, when you see that YouTube uh, videos, YouTube um, uh, trigonometry interviews, interview. um, yeah. the trigonometry interview that disappeared, mm. we mm. used to do regular mm. uh, big numbers on YouTube with Peter mm. Hitchens' interviews. They mm. disappeared from Trace and suddenly yeah. they, were, they were no more. Um, this very station was taken off YouTube mm. for no good reason, mm. uh, thanks to three interviews that Julie Hartley Brewer did, all of which were perfectly well within mm. uh, the realms of Ofcom regulation. Mm. Um, and it was this kind of uh, arbitrary nonsense that mm. used to happen every time you'd post something on Facebook, you'd get a warning from, you know, some dweeb in California saying yeah. some of the information in this interview may be misleading. Well, the big when it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, the big, that's, that's power without accountability yeah. or responsibility, the big tech stuff, and that's, that's quite sinister as well. But, you know, in a free society, it's our job to do it. We, as I say, we, I, I think the most irritating thing at all, the sad thing really, is that a lot of the points we were making about the cost, about the sort of wheel of rationality just falling off uh, during lockdowns mm. that we made are, are sadly true. And um, I never personally, I, you know, I, t I took the vaccine, I had the third jab, and I, I don't think I'll have any more. Yeah. I had COVID, but, uh, you know, we weren't, we never uh, put out anything that was unreasonable, I don't think, throughout. I think we just asked questions well, I think that disturbing. should have been asked. Yeah, the disturbing thing, I think, for most sensible people and Democrats as well, mm. uh, is that, you know, whether or not you're, you were right to ask the questions, you have a right to ask those questions, and so does everybody else. And so and by, by no means did anybody elect a government uh, to be a dictator, dicta dictatorial organisation which you couldn't question. But they saw us, Mike. That's the problem, is the government, a government unit paid for by our taxes, saw us 
as adversaries um, and attempted to adapt uh, b the, our behaviour effectively, uh, you know, to try and silence people asking normal questions. Mm. Well, as I say, one of the most depressing things during the whole lockdown, uh, the, the success of not lockdowns, was the 5 p.m. briefings, and I, I think the the main a lot of the mainstream media just didn't do its job. No, I mean, I, I there was one question which they never basically asked: Are you sure that the um, the effects won't, you know, aren't worse than the cure? Mm. Um, and and somehow that never got asked, you know, and it was the most uh, most important question of all. Yeah. Um, so this is this is sinister. Oh, I think large portions of the media were absolutely hopeless and Useless. complicit uh, mm. in what went on and, mm. and should forever be ashamed of what, what mm. happened with mm. them. Mm. But there we are. Um, just to, on, a, on a cheerier note, I've got a great uh, picture here that's been sent in from Andy, uh, travelling on Greater Anglia trains. There's a, a sign that goes across the top which changes daily. Mm. Uh, today's sign says, please avoid travelling on our trains. Right. While you're on the train. Right. Well, that's not going to boost uh, sales of tickets. Not really, is it? That's <laughs> going to be great for the economy. No. Let's talk about a story that we actually covered last week, um, mm. but you wanted to touch upon uh, the story yeah. that uh, it comes out. That every six days, mm. somebody's murdered in this country by uh, somebody who is on probation. Mm. And this comes after, um, well, we had a case last week, didn't we, mm. of, the, uh, of the guy McSweeney, Jordan mm. McSweeney, who's mm. gone back to prison now for mm. committing another murder when yeah. he was out when he shouldn't have been out. Yeah, and, and we need to think of the victims here. Uh, interestingly, we, um, I got into a, a little minor Twitter spat a couple of days ago when uh, Nick Timothy wrote a piece in The Telegraph. Um, uh, part of the piece was arguing that prison works. And, of course, logically it must work because you, you put violent uh, criminals behind bars mm -hmm. and for the period of time they're behind bars, they can't be violent and murder people and rape people and assault people. Yeah. That's, that's basics. And uh, anyway, I, 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 I copied uh, Nick, Nick Timothy's piece and Rory Stewart, the liberal politician who, you know, is, is, uh, was in the Tory party, yes. uh, says, no, no, you can't say that prison works. Well, he hadn't read the article. I mean, the article, Nick's, the, the article was actually about a man that uh, had attacked and knocked down, uh, brutally assaulted a, a man in the northeast and raped his his uh, girlfriend. Mm. And uh, sorry, I mean, prison must be. I mean, people like that must be locked up and sure. put safely behind bars. Yeah. To think otherwise, uh, you, you're sort of li li living in a, a parallel universe. And what irritates me about this, uh, in terms of general public policy, is that the people that govern us don't take any responsibility. You know, obviously, everyone heard about the case of uh, Tom Roberts, young man that was killed in Bournemouth mm. by uh, an asylum seeker who was granted asylum here. He'd murdered and created under false pretenses because yeah. he pretended he was a child when he was not. That's right. Clearly not a child, and he, you know, he was a wrong one. And uh, we took him in, and he's and someone pays with their life. And the problem is that, I mean, you can't. Rhetorically, what would, what would be the situation, Mike, if 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 the Home Secretary or the Prime Minister took proper responsibility for the people that are coming in on the south coast, undocumented and unvetted, mm. right? They come in, and they said, "Look, if any of these people uh, get into serious trouble, I'll take the sentence." Then, yeah. funnily, it would be dealt with. It, it would be because we've got another case coming up uh, later on today. We're going to talk to Ben Habib about it mm. of a failed asylum seeker uh, who was turned down for asylum, should have been deported. Um, but was not deported, was, was taken in by mm. a very kindly elderly woman in uh, North Yorkshire, in, uh, in North Yorkshire yeah. um, and who ended up yeah. staying in her house, yeah. taking advantage of her and then murdering her brutally. I read about that, yeah, it was still right? in Adele, yeah. Just yeah. unbelievable. Unbelievable. But, in, uh, yeah. but, the point, but the question has to be, you know, not how could this have happened, but how mm. is he still here mm. if he's been turned down for asylum? It's insane. I mean, they don't, the, the figures, the, na the aggregate national figures show that you, if you get here, you stay, pretty much. I mean, the, 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 the numbers of, of repatriations, dep deportations, mm. are so small. I mean, you know, it's, it's tiny numbers, under 100. I mean, you just don't... This is why I keep on going about the incentives. The incentive to stay, the incentive to come is massive because if you get here, you stay here. Yeah. I mean, it just, we're just and not again, up to it. And, of course, again, the arguments that are made about why it must be right... Uh, mm. People say, oh, well, because, you know, most of the people who apply for asylum eventually get it. Well, they eventually get it because they stay here for so long. They don't actually get asylum. They actually get residence. They just wear Because where, they've been where living the, here for yeah, so long. Wear the system down. Mm. So, I, again, I say that any, any politician that is serious about having a 
border sovereignty and a secure border. Yeah. You have to get out of the protocol. It's not asking too much, is no, it? No, these are the basics. These used to be the basics, Mike, that be, this current generation of politicians mm. have just forgotten about. No responsibility taken. It'll be all right. It doesn't affect them. And actually, that's the, that's the point. It largely doesn't mm. affect them. It affects other people. Mm. It affects the rest of us, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. William, good to see you, as ever. We're out of time, unfortunately. William Clouston there uh, with a look at the realities of life, because that's what we're looking at here. Uh, we're looking at...